to, Louis, Louis has taught me how to swear in French actually quite well, <laughs> and he enjoys it when I. Well, not, I don't know. Whoever I'm not sitting next to, okay. I'm mostly going to make fun of Kevin, so I'll sit Sweet. next to him. Uh, well, this is quite a panel. Uh, Nicholas Zenstrom, founder of Skype, among other things, Chad Hurley, YouTube, Kevin Rose Dig, and others. Uh, I'm actually, and I'm all kidding aside, I'm honored to be talking to you guys. Um, oddly enough, Luik put together this panel, but he, then he said that we're going to talk about the future, which is uh, the most open-ended you know, kind of topic at a tech conference I can think of. So I, I take that as license to talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about for the next half an hour, um, if you're okay with that. that works, but I will, I'm sure. uh, oh, sorry. Sounds good, let's do it. Um, sometimes I forget that I'm not the only person up on the stage, so. Uh, serious question though, none of you guys need to get up in the morning and do anything other than watch TV all day or whatever the heck you wanna do on your private yachts and boats and everything. Uh, but you do get up every day and all three of you work very hard uh, at different things, although investing is a common trend. Why, what is it you guys are working for at this point? And Nicholas, I'll start sure. with you. No. Um, True. I mean, for me, it's um, it's all about that. You know, today there is so much more exciting stuff and opportunities that you know on on the you know on the internet and in the tech you know uh, landscape than it was maybe five years ago. Five years ago, you know, there was more great opportunities than there were ten years ago. So I'm just thinking that right right now there's so much things happening because of these growing platforms. You know, obviously the, the social graph, the, the whole mobile internet. And um, so there are more and more opportunities for, for new, you know, new business models, new companies than it was, ever was before. And that makes me think also that in the next five years, there's going to be even more opportunities. The more and more of the economy is moving online, everyone, everything is, is online related. So it's just more great opportunities. And, and, and one thing I'm also you know, very much passionate about is you know, to, to help you know, uh, entrepreneurs to, you know, to expand and reach their potential. That's why, you know, go out and, and try to find great companies like which we can invest in. Is that entirely true? I mean, is there, is, there has to be something more than, than giving back to the community. And I mean, you're a fighter. All, all of you guys have, you know, if, if sort of Darwin survived to the point where you were, you know, winners, there must be something that competitively. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, you know, think, I think that if you're an entrepreneur, which I, you know, we, we, we're all, you know, we can call ourselves entrepreneurs or ex-entrepreneurs or whatever, graduated to investors. But it's, I think it's all about being competitive. You know, you have an idea and, you know, you have a lot of people criticizing, oh, it's not gonna work. And you're like, well, you, I mean, I'm gonna show them. And it's all, all about being very, very competitive. And, and you wanna and win. You, that? Want, you want to win. Yeah, you wanna win, exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, f that's why, you know, when we started Atomico was that, you know, like we thought it was a great opportunity to you know to build you know an investment firm outside of silicon valley because we thought that the, for every day there are more and more great opportunities all around the world which is outside of silicon valley and that's kind of that's what we want to prove that's our proof point we want to show chad well uh you know i'm here to have fun uh here, here on earth i'm here on earth to have fun life's too short just to sit around and uh you know I just like building new things. I like uh, exploring and creating and uh, working on problems. Uh, sometimes it's selfishly, kind of identifying things I'm personally frustrated with, but in turn, I think that turns into uh, a, a better process to create a product that's hopefully more useful, um, just because you're, you're creating out of a, a personal problem. Okay, we'll come back to this. So it's, it's competitiveness, giving back to the community. I just want to have fun. Yeah. Uh, Kevin? I, I think that it, none of this really feels like work to me. So when I think about what I want to do when I get up in the morning, well, last night was a great example. So I couldn't sleep because I had jet lag. I was up to like 4 a.m. and yeah. I'm on my laptop and I'm downloading Mountain Lion because I love technology and I want to see the latest stuff. And so, you know, when I meet with entrepreneurs in the Bay Area and I'm hanging out and I'm having coffee and I'm hearing about these awesome ideas, it never feels like work. I'm sitting there and I'm yeah. getting excited about their ideas and I somehow can hopefully help them out in some way and it's just, it's a great way to spend your time. Yeah, so it's sort of like what Chad said, you're having fun yeah, doing this. Uh, but I think all three of you have a competitive spark as well. I mean, you know, you Absolutely. two put down a few companies along the way. Yeah. And, okay. um, you know, Chad, what are you doing now? Because the last time I interviewed you, I think was at LeWeb a couple of years ago, and yeah. at that point we were focused on race cars and your fashion line. Yeah, some hobbies. And now, and now you're doing delicious and some other things. So tell me, what is it you do every day? Yeah, so uh, we, we've created a company called Avo Systems. It's, uh, 
In essence, it's an internal development platform that shares common components um, that allows us just to get things up and running quickly. So uh, Delicious allowed us to hit the ground running with a service, existing service. We have uh, Mayway, which is a Mandarin version uh, of Delicious, and we're launching Zine uh, soon in the coming weeks. So it, it's what is, what is Zine? Is Zine is, is, is uh, in essence, it allows people to build online magazines. It's just a more visually rich way to present information. And you'll be more and more companies. You, have, you said you had 40 employees now, is that right? Yeah, we have roughly 40 employees across three offices. We have one in San Mateo outside of San Francisco, uh, one in Beijing, and one office in New Zealand. Why delicious? I mean, I, I think that, like, you know, what I thought when I saw this is, is it, it's history, it's old news. I mean, even if you make it better, I don't understand. Like, that doesn't seem like the right challenge to a guy who buys race cars and built YouTube. <laughs> well, it was, uh, it was definitely a challenge. It continues to be a challenge in terms of just what we needed to do to get the site off of Yahoo's hands. We had to rewrite the entire code base. We had to migrate all the existing users and data. Um, and we still really need to redefine the service. We, we, that had taken the, the majority of our time initially. Uh, those plans have kind of been on ice and while we've been focusing on Mayway and Zine, but uh, we're going to kind of re-kick or restart the, uh, the innovation on the Delicious side. It was just an existing brand, uh, had an existing footprint that we could leverage. And, uh, you know, it, I know how hard it is to build a brand, and we just wanted to see what we could do to kind of jumpstart things ourselves. And, uh, yeah, it was an interesting challenge instead of just starting something from scratch. Nicholas, at Atomico, uh, we talked backstage, your current fund is $165 million. Is that that's right? Dollars or pounds? 165, yeah. yeah. And are you, I mean, are you actually there every day and taking pitches and reading emails and doing the grunt work of a VC? So I think what, what differentiates us from, from, you know, a lot of VCs and maybe more uh, differentiates us from maybe Silicon Valley VCs is that our footprint is really global, which means that we, you know, we're like 25 people in the team. And we're spread where do you have offices? We have, so we're, we're here in London, headquarters, yeah. but then we have, you know, we have satellite offices in Sao Paulo and uh, Beijing. Istanbul. And, and Istanbul, and right. we're going to open up in uh, Tokyo as well. And that's really much, I think the reason we have that is very much because that represents, you know, the, today's reality that companies which have something that works, you really need to be out and expand internationally as fast as possible, whether you're, you know, you're, you're starting your business in Silicon Valley, whether you're starting in London and Stockholm or you know, somewhere else. If you, you need to expand really quickly, the, you know, the market for online companies is a global market. And if you don't, if you don't go out fast, you're going to have someone copying you. It's going to be much harder. The Germans are going to copy you. Among others, yes. Yeah. You, know, you have local, and also you have a lot of local copy, copy um, uh, copycats as have well. Have you ever backed a company that was a copycat? Like, how do you feel? Do you generally disdain that, or is it? Do you see business there sometimes? Sorry, one more time. Have you ever backed a company that was a copycat in some way? Uh, no, we haven't. Yeah. You know, I think what what you know what, what you need to differentiate between um, you know you say you know evolution and copying. You know, so yeah. take for example, you know, with Skype, we didn't invent internet telephony. But we used a whole different technology and a whole different kind of, you know, made it much more easier to use, but we didn't copy anyone else's. We had a lot of companies copying us, though, you know, like blatant, like, you know, even taking, like, you know, our logo type and whatsoever. Yeah. Um, Kevin, so you, gosh, you know, I've known you since 05 when you first launched Dig, and I've watched, you know, I've watched your career, and you've gone from hardcore entrepreneur who invests sometimes to hardcore entrepreneur who invests a lot, to you know, you're now full time as a partner at Google Ventures, which what, was a month ago you joined, like that, yeah. and you got engaged. Yep. And it's like you're all grown up, right? And so, <laughs> you know, what what's this all about? You know, where's your fire to start the next company, or you, do you think you can channel that fire into investing? I, I get the same feeling when I see a really good idea. You know, it's like you sit down with an entrepreneur and they have some yep. idea that you know is just going to be the next hottest thing, and then you know you spit out. 10 or 15 ideas for, to that back to them, and they maybe might go implement one of them. Yeah. So you kind of see some of your vision being built out in various different companies that you work yeah. with. But, Is that um, annoying for you? Because you, you want them to do all 15? or? No, not really. I think that it, it's really, I mean, obviously up to the founder, they have the core vision in mind. I think it's, it's, it's pretty cool when you give them an idea and you actually see one little idea make it into what their, their roadmap. But um, as far as me personally starting something new, I mean, 
eight years or so of doing this, so I'm kind of a little bit burnt out as far as yeah. on the entrepreneurial side. <clears throat> I could use a little break, so um, investing has been a thing that a passion of mine for a while now, for several years. Well, let me Just ask you sense. this. Let me ask a different way, and I mean this with literally no joking, all due respect. Because you know we've known each other a long time. I know you're this laughing. Is, this but is when the bad questions no, come. You, uh, unlike Chad and Nicholas, you have not been an entrepreneur who had a billion dollar plus exit, who then went on to do other things, and 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 you had um, you know you had Dig, which it's unclear what Dig's worth, if anything, at this point. You had Revision Three, which I think was a nice exit, but not a billion dollar exit. Right. And and then you had Milk, which you sold, but not a big return. And so. You know, I, I'd say that uh, you're, you're, as an entrepreneur, you're not, you haven't had that big exit yet. But as an investor, you're sort of the, you know, the best natural hitter I've ever seen. And, and you've invested in, and I'll, get, I'll miss some, but Twitter, Zynga, Njimoko, what else? Uh, Square. Square, uh, Square Chomp, uh, Foursquare, Zynga. I mean, I mean it's, like, it's like a hit parade of, you know, of, this is as an angel investor, and now you're, so it's clear to me why, you know, but why, why uh, it just, something's not quite right there. Why are you so good at picking companies, but you haven't been able to? I think a lot of it comes down to execution. And when I started Dig, uh, you know, here some seven or so, eight, eight years ago, something like that, um, it, you know, I was, I was very young and it was my first time starting a company. And so I, I made a ton of mistakes along the way. Um, and you're always constantly learning. So I, I put it a, a lot on me, a lot on, uh, you know, competition coming up around me. Um, but, you know, I, it depends on what you consider to be a good exit. Like, I think that Revision 3 just recently sold to Discovery Channel. I was very happy with that outcome. Yep. Um, but, you know, I haven't had a huge, you know, multi-hundred I mean million it. dollar. I don't think you've had what you want. In other words, I think that's a problem for you. That you haven't, you know, that... that that YouTube, Chad started a company that sold for $1.6 billion. One of the first stories I ever broke on TechCrunch, brother, that was fun. And, and you know, Nicholas, I, you sold Skype three times. I mean, it's like, you know, it's, you haven't had that. And I don't think anyone in the world cares or judges you for it, except I bet you do. I bet in your, you know, the back of your mind, you're a little bugged by that. Yeah, I am a little bugged by that, actually. Yeah. I, I, feel, I feel that way. Like, honestly, as entrepreneurs, you want to make something massive. You want to create something that, that in one way or another changes the world. And, and it's not so much about the actual dollar amount. I think that when you get to a certain level of, of personal wealth, like, it, it's all the same. I, I, I say, you know, um, I think when you're in the Bay Area and once you can make six figures or $100,000 US dollars a year, you live the same lifestyle no matter how much money you have in the bank. You're still eating the same food and everything else. I think that for, for personally and internally, you know, you want to create something massive. You want to. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, as an entrepreneur, you want to make something that, like, yeah. you know, it's your kind of like stamp on, on, on what you've done with your life and what so you'll be known point, for. You'll do it. I don't know if I'll ever get back out there again. I probably, I'm sure I will, but it's going to be a few yeah. years. I'm, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing now, and I, I really love Google Ventures, and I think that uh, I'm going to stick with that for a while. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know what's down the road, and, and I always have ideas. I'm that kind of guy that wakes up in the middle of the night and, and it has like four or five different ideas and writes them down, and there's a handful of things that I've never built that I have on paper that I would like to someday build, and um, I, I might get there again. Like what? Name one. Because now we're talking about the future, which is what we're supposed to talk about. So what is one, that's one thing, broad stroke. And don't worry, we won't laugh if it's a dumb idea. No, I mean, because Dig was a stupid idea when it launched. And then it was like, oh my god, this is pretty awesome. So YouTube, everyone made fun of YouTube when it first launched. <laughs> uh, so one idea that I really, uh, I'll no, give this wait, out no there to really anyone. No one made fun of Skype, though. Well, it was useful from day one. It really was. We both had cats doing backflips off of diving boards on our, on our stuff, and, and it, Skype was very useful. Anyway, sorry, but I cut you um, off eight times. So anyway, uh, the one idea that I, I really would like to see built that I feel is going to happen, uh, this is a long story, dude. You don't want me to spend another three minutes on this? No, I want you to spend 15 seconds on it. <sighs> yeah. I can't explain it in 15 seconds. We'll get to the last part. So... I think that there's a lot of opportunity in the fact that Apple TV is coming out soon. There'll be apps developed for the TV. We know the fixed resolution of the size of the TV. And so I know that when you're looking at an Apple TV, commerce is going to change. I'll be able to look at the TV and see the actual size of the garment that I want to purchase because of the, we know the actual yeah. pixel resolution. I think there's a lot of stuff around a real time like QV slash a QVC slash like gaming component of, a, of, a, of an application that is on the television that has to do with purchasing things. 
Um, anyway, it's around that, that genre. That sounds like a mess, right? I, it sounds like a 200-person a, a company. It's a huge, like, it would shipping products, and that's why I don't want to do it. I want to invest in someone that is going to do that. Nicholas, would you, what do you think about that idea in general? Like, does that sound, I mean, you know, ecosystem. It's a 15 around. second idea, that's not fair. You know, I, well, I, don't, I, don't you know what I would do, jump what I, would, I would wait into the future and see if it works a little bit, and say, if it works, like, I'm going to call up and, you know, try to help with international expansion. <laughs> what? <laughs> because all these things, you know, you can have all this, you know, the, the reality is like, you have, you know, ideas, this is great, but who knows if it's going to work? I mean, even back with, you know, we go back to the, like, the past time now, but you know, even you know, with Skype, it's like, would anyone really want to sit in front of a computer with a headset and speak? We didn't know. We had to try. So, yeah. you know, you, have, you never know. You, know, you can look at ideas, say, oh, fantastic, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's stupid, maybe it's great. You don't know. You have to try it. And I think that's why Chad's doing really uh, cool things with building reusable components that you can quickly iterate and try new ideas. Like, that's something that that I believe is the absolute way to approach new, new projects. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the reasons we, uh, I guess, headed in that direction was because, well, being involved with PayPal and then with YouTube, um, you know, it's kind of pain in the ass to get started all over again. And that we, we have a lot of ideas we want to work on. And when we were inside of Google, we saw all the tools that the developers internally, all the engineers had access to and how much easier it made their lives. So to some extent, we're trying to replicate some of, that, some of the best stuff at Google and also with, uh, I guess our just office approach, how we're trying to build out our global footprint, is that just leveraging multiple offices worldwide, we think, uh, will give us an advantage. It's maybe a unique approach for a smaller startup, but uh, between the platform and the offices, we feel like uh, we'll be able to innovate, move faster, and be nimble. Um, if you, uh, I'm trying not to ask Kevin. You know, I'm just going to ask. You, I know, I'm sorry. I just don't understand. So you had this, this, <laughs> you, you have, you, uh, so you drive this Chevy Volt because it's the green choice and it's awesome and, and in San Francisco, like, it's, that's important to have, that image. But in the garage, you have. No, I, I got the Volt because I was commuting to Google and they give you free electricity. And so when you go down to Google, you can plug it in. I get free electricity when I go home. And so it's basically like free gas. Okay. Uh, but in the garage, you have a, you have, a Porsche, and you had a 911S, which I, as far as I understand is a pretty nice Porsche, which is great. I think that's fine. But what I don't understand is like you just recently bought, like sold it and bought a brand new one that's the 911 Turbo S. And, and again, that's fine too. I just don't get how like, you know, like I drive a Volt and then it's like, but really I drive the, the, you know, and I need that. What's, anyway, I don't really need a response. I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but why don't you tell the story he go brings this up the because there's a backstory to this that's kind of kind interesting. Of, yeah, so go ahead and tell that so, story. So, I've always liked Porsches since I was a little kid. I didn't yeah. want to get one just because they're douchey cars. And you didn't just want the S. You wanted the Turbo when you were a kid, right? No, well, I mean, the Turbo is a very a nice, of. fun to drive car. Yeah. So basically what happened is Ben, who created a company called Chomp, who recently sold to Apple, yeah. uh, I was an advisor to, to his company. Um, he, as an advisor, basically you meet with him, you know, a couple times a month and he gives you a bunch of shares in his company. So the company sells, everyone makes a lot of money and he's writing me my check and he's a Porsche guy. He had a 911 yeah. as well and he was like, you know what? Was his I, a turbo or? No, it was just a standard 911. Okay, okay, Why sorry, are you so obsessed with this? Right, so basically he said, I want to get one. I think you should have one. I'm giving you this cash for free. Basically, we should go down and get cars together, and so we went down and got cars together. You just went down and you drove away in a new car? No, you have to order them, and then they, they build it. <laughs> That's awesome. I told you this is a horrible story. I just like I the fact mostly that drive, drive the Volt. I drive a Volt. What's and wrong it, with the Volt? I think it, it gets great gas mileage. And you get free electricity from Google, which is, is sort of a man in your socioeconomic condition. It's good to get free you know, fuel, so I think that's great. <laughs> How's your walking treadmill doing? I, you know, it's, uh, yeah. You spent like four grand on a walking treadmill. No, no, I spent, I spent, well, I spent about five hundred dollars on the desk and five hundred dollars on the treadmill. It was great. Yeah, and then you bought one too. Yes, it's, it's been working great. Yeah. No, you left it in your office when you when you got bought no, by we Google. We got it again. We didn't have oh. any room at Google. We got it again. Anyway, all right. Well, let's get back to stuff that other people care about besides us. Uh, I want to take some questions the last few minutes, if you guys are okay with that. But I want to get back to like, it's always so ridiculous talking about the future. 
It's like mobile's gonna be big and you know, Facebook and that. But I actually, like, let's have a, try to have a two or three minute conversation seriously about like the next five years, let's just go out that far. You know, what is it as investors and, and, and still entrepreneurs, what is it that you really think is important in terms of the tech community that needs to be built and that you'd be willing to fund or build? And I'll, Nicholas, let's start with you. Sure. So, um, as, I, as I said, I mean, there's, there's more and more opportunities and, and, you know, there's so many more people being connected whether they're being, you know, through mobile or, or, or you know, um, traditional fixed internet connections, more and more of the economy is moving online. So, and the other thing that also is important that is that, you know, you know, ten years ago, we were very much focused on building the technology. Today is very much about building the products and making things easier. And uh, so, I, I think that's obviously a trend that you will continue to see. That, that you know, um, entrepreneurs and companies will be focused much more on, on solving problems and, and not technical problems but product problems and all these uh, enabling technologies of course making things um, much more easier to do and I think there's obviously a few big sectors which still are you know undone which are obviously you know health and education and that's something that uh, wow that scared the shit out of me <laughs> so do, I mean, what, those are, that scare you those are bit? two sectors which yeah, I think yeah. are still you know needs to be you know, disrupted. Are you are you investing in healthcare and space? No, no, no. I'm not saying I'm not saying healthcare. I'm saying, I'm I'm saying I mean I'm thinking more from a like from a software th you know point of view. You have things like, you know, like you know, Jawbone app, which is a sensors that you know measures your, you know, your movements and stuff like that. So I don't think necessarily like healthcare yeah. in in like in in life science. I'm thinking that from from an IT. You guys can hear Nicholas, right? Uh, is this, does this work? Yeah, we have a mic problem with Nicholas. Okay. Does uh, this work? Okay. I yeah, so and I'm saying, yeah. obviously, I mean, I don't know anything about, you know, life science. What I'm saying is that from more from an, you know, from an internet, from big data, from, you know, mobile devices, that part of, you know, yeah. I think is a big opportunity. Yeah. So, Chad, you know, in your, in your, you're, you're going to have fun. We know that. But... What are the big problems you'd like to see someone tackle in the next five years? Well, uh, I, I, I think in general, um, technology today asks too much of people. I guess, I, I don't know, I just feel like I'm tired of tweeting and liking and updating statuses. I, 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 would, I would think over the next few years, things have just become much more passive, much more personalized, uh, much more useful, uh, be it maybe collecting information uh, for health reasons, tracking, uh, you know, body temperature, body movement, whatever. Uh, but I, I think a lot of things are going to head in that direction because, um, I mean, right now everything's being, uh, I guess, the, the way that they're positioning is everything's going to be social. They're trying to share information with everyone. But I think uh, I don't really care necessarily what my friends are doing. I, I want to make sense of what I'm doing. And um, so I, I just think, in general, passive personalization is, is going to be a, a big trend over the next five years. You guys are both being more pragmatic than I thought you would be. Like, what about like mining space asteroids for platinum and get, putting a man on Mars and solving cancer? I mean, these are crowd-pleasing answers. And, and I know none of that's going to happen in the next five years, but normally you'd hear those kinds of answers from people on stage. You guys are talking more about baby steps here. Well, you know, just trying to be practical. And, uh, you know, yes, because <laughs> and, uh, practical. And, and, and try to think about personal problems. I'm, I, you know, I don't have a problem with asteroids or mining, so I'm not going to work on that. Um, I, th you know, I think that, that there, are, there are more you know, uh, bigger problems that we have. You know, you know, like you have a huge problem in front of us in terms of, you know, the, you know obviously financial, huge financial crisis. We have a huge um, climate problem, which is not getting better. So I think these are some of the you know, uh, problems that also you know, internet yeah. technologies can help to solve. You know, like you know, one, one company, you know, David Freeberg's company, the Climate Corporation, is you know, mining data from weather stations to give weather insurances to farmers. This is an example of where you can utilize you know, big data and, and algorithms to give farmers insurance against you know, volatile weather. Are you an weather. investor in that yes. company? Yes. Yeah. So, okay. so, so I'm saying that there are there are a lot of companies which are doing you know attacking some of these bigger bigger problems. Maybe not solving the problem, but mitigating yeah. some of those issues. What about mining space asteroids? Any interest in that? No, not at all. I'd really like to 
uh, see that happen, I think. But what about Google Ventures? Are they, and then we're gonna go to questions, but you guys do look at some of this crazy stuff, right? You know, Google's always trying to fix the world, so do you actually see a lot of these eco deals come through and space stuff and? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff coming through, but I, I'm focused primarily on the, this early stage stuff. So, yeah. so you know, I'm, I'm doing all pretty much seed investments. Um, for me personally, I, I like what they said. I want to echo what they said about the kind of quantified self and like figuring out how to improve my life through technology. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I love the Fitbits and the Ups and the Nike Fuel Bands. Um, I, I think that we're like in the 1980s, like cell phone, like brick cell phone stage of those devices. Like they're, they're big and bulky and they don't do a whole lot. But uh, uh, in the next 10 years, it's going to be an interesting space to watch. Um, the other thing for me is I, I think about mobile and how, how kind of early we are there as well. And, you know, there's a handful of apps that we use every single day. And a, a, a friend of mine I was talking to said something like, uh, you know, there's going to be eight to ten apps that we use every single day. And what are those, right? And yeah. I think that right now that we probably know are th of three or, four to the, uh, three or four of those apps. You know, we got phone and texting. We have social, whether it's Facebook or Path or Twitter, or whatever it may be. Um, I think person-to-person -person kind of cash-free payments is going to be another really interesting thing. Um, there's, there's probably a handful of other little verticals that I think that uh, I just want to kind of keep my eye on and try to find like the next big thing in those spaces, the, the apps that you'll use every single day. So on that, you know, some, this is working. Okay, some of the, you know, apps that I'm using every day on my smartphone, sorry, like email, calendar, and address book. And these are like, you know, the apps that you had, you know, yeah. since the beginning of dawn. And those are th still areas which I think are lacking innovation. I mean, I don't know how much time we're all losing, you know, you know, with our, you know, th things get stuck in our e inboxes. And, and I think one of the, you know, big, big areas, I think, is, is um, you know, enterprise, where, you know, we're all kind of coming from a consumer space. And in the consumer area, everything is happening so quickly. But you go look at enterprises, things are just like still Stone Age, and things are so inefficient. So I think a lot of these things going to, you know, I would like to see, and I don't think it's going to happen very, anytime soon, but, you know, you know, five years, I think that you would maybe see much, much more things happening in, in the enterprise space. Or maybe it's even have to take 10 years because it's so slow, the cycles, you know, on the enterprise. Yeah, nothing gets me up in the morning like talking about enterprise startups, but what about like laser beams and jetpacks and stuff? If I was a billionaire, honestly, and we have multiple billionaires or close to it sitting up on here, I, I would be looking heavily into personal jetpack technology. You, you have a fund, right? Yeah, but, so, you know. So what, what are you investing in these days? I'll tell you, we just invested in a hardware company that does something pretty magical. I can't talk about it yet, but it's something a lot more interesting than uh, anything anyone else set up here today, <laughs> except for <laughs> laser beam stuff. But I want to take some questions, if you, unless you guys need to retort. To, I, uh, I just threw down. So OK, uh, we have another 20 minutes or so for questions. So um, OK, Scoble, you can start. Is Scoble here? Yeah, he's right oh, there. He's always he's, here. Because hand up. Like, me, me, There he is. Well, let's hold on. Let's do this in a way that we can record it for historical purposes. What's your high, high score on song pop, and why did you get into that? Uh, 19,000, 19, I think. Uh, or maybe it's 9,000. Uh, what Roberts is referring to is I was up early this morning because uh, God knows what time zone we're in, and I opened Facebook, and Zuckerberg was like talking incessantly. Uh, about song pop, this that I didn't even know what it was. Anyway, I clicked over to it. It's this neat little app that it plays a snippet of a song, and you compete against other people to name the song. Anyway, I played it for two hours this morning and 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 tweeted about it uh, more than once. So that's it. I don't know. It's cool. I don't think I'd invest in it, but I had a lot of fun playing with it for two hours. So yeah, you guys heard of this? No. Next question. Uh, let's go back here in the back. Hi, Mike. Um, uh, guys, um, I just wanted to ask if any of you are doing anything in education. Education. Nicholas brought it up earlier, but... Uh... Yeah, no, um, that's it's an um, important area. We're not doing anything, unfortunately, but we would love to. We're not developing anything as well. Um, I, I recently made an investment in a company called Treehouse um, that essentially... They're here in London, right? Uh, yeah, they, they have... Yeah. Part of their office in yeah. Bath, um, but essentially they um, they believe that the school system is broken when it comes to tech education because uh, you know you can't learn about the latest technology when you go to college. It's already four or five years out of date. Um, so they're doing all online, video-based, quiz-based, 
uh, tech education for iPhone developers and uh, for standard Rails development and other things. We, uh, we invested in a company called Code Academy, which had some news yesterday. I love it. I, I love seeing people reinvent ways to learn. And it's not just looking at a screen and doing it on the internet. It's the constant feedback and the, and the ways to interact that I, I think are great. We love that space as well. Uh, I think we have time for one more. Over here. OK, I have a question in two parts. One, uh, Mike, if I came to you with um, space mining uh, project, will you fund it? Nope. <laughs> Seriously? There's absolutely no way. But, <laughs> but that's because it, there's no chance of that making any kind of money. Um, but I would love to see it happen. I think that would, that would be jetpacks and that kind of stuff would be cool. What's the second question? Okay, the second question. Well, actually, would you guys invest in, in this stuff? No, you've said no already. Are any of you investing in any companies in Africa or looking into Africa at all? Guys, Africa? Uh, not today, no. Kevin, Google has no investments in Africa? I'm not sure about Google proper. Google Ventures, our fund, is, is based out of, we just base, uh, invest in, in primarily US-based companies. Really? Well, it's just because uh, it's mostly the entrepreneurs that we meet, and I sometimes go out to events like this to try and meet other entrepreneurs and grow our circle bigger, but yeah. It's... I don't think we have any investments in Africa. I'm not sure we've been pitched by an African company. Um, we have investments all over Asia and Europe, um, so we would look at it, but it's a tough, any market that has, you know, weight, you know, property rights issues and personal security issues, you know, you're going to have to look at it. But there's, there's some things that, uh, you know, there's some opportunities there, I think. Uh, okay, guys, thanks very much. Uh, any last words before we get off stage? Thank you. Thanks yeah, very much. Thanks. Appreciate your time. Great.